In the early days of the internet, after the dot-com bubble, when social networking was just a concept, one platform emerged as a trailblazer, setting the stage for the social media revolution we know today. This is the story of Friendster, a tale of innovation, rapid growth, and ultimate decline that offers valuable lessons for the tech industry. The year was 2002. Jonathan Abrams, a visionary entrepreneur, founded Friendster with a simple yet revolutionary idea. Create a platform for users to connect with friends and share personal profiles. The name itself was a clever blend of Friend and Napster, reflecting its social networking roots inspired by the popular file sharing service. Friendster's launch was nothing short of spectacular. Within months, the platform had amassed over 3 million users, a testament to its innovative features. Users could create profiles, connect with friends, and explore an expanding network of relationships. These capabilities, commonplace today, were groundbreaking in 2002. But what made Friendster tick from a technical standpoint? At its core, Friendster ran on a technology stack that was typical for its time, yet pushed to its limits by the platform's rapid growth. The foundation was built on Linux servers, providing a stable and open source environment for web applications. Apache, the popular web server, handled requests from users, serving as the backbone for delivering web content. Friendster's backend was primarily written in PHP, a server-side scripting language widely used for web development at the time. PHP allowed for dynamic content generation and database interactions, crucial for a social networking platform. To store and manage user data and relationships, Friendster utilized MySQL as its relational database management system. On the front end, Friendster employed the standard web technologies of the day, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These technologies worked together to create user interfaces and enhance interactivity, allowing users to navigate profiles, send messages, and connect with friends. As Friendster's popularity soared, reaching over 115 million registered users at its peak, the platform began to encounter significant technical challenges. The existing infrastructure, initially designed for a much smaller user base, struggled to keep up with the explosive growth. This led to severe performance issues, with page load times sometimes reaching up to 40 seconds. Why couldn't Friendster overcome these technical hurdles? The answer lies in a combination of architectural limitations and management decisions. Friendster initially used a monolithic architecture where all components were tightly coupled. This architecture became a critical issue as the user base grew rapidly, leading to performance bottlenecks. Instead of addressing these performance issues by scaling server resources or optimizing the architecture, Friendster's management focused on adding new features. This included unnecessary functionalities like VoIP services, which further burdened the already strained system. The result was a cluttered and confusing interface that drove many users away to competitors who offered more streamlined platforms. While Friendster grappled with these challenges, new players entered the field. In 2003, MySpace launched, followed by Facebook in 2004. These platforms learned from Friendster's mistakes, focusing on user experience and scalability from the outset. MySpace, for instance, capitalized on Friendster's shortcomings by allowing more customization options for user profiles and integrating music features that appealed to younger audiences. They also focused on improving site performance and scalability from the start. Facebook, on the other hand, built its platform with scalability in mind from the beginning. While it also used PHP, like Friendster, Facebook implemented a distributed architecture that allowed it to handle massive amounts of data traffic efficiently. They developed innovative solutions like Hip Hop for PHP, which converted PHP code into highly optimized C++ to improve performance. Facebook also created a custom storage engine called Tau to enhance database performance. As Friendster struggled, its management faced critical decisions that would shape its trajectory. In 2004, Google offered $30 million to acquire Friendster, but the board advised against selling, believing they could build a billion-dollar company instead. This decision is often viewed as a pivotal mistake, as it missed an opportunity for stability during turbulent times. Friendster also suffered from leadership instability, with six CEOs in just seven years. 
Each new leader brought different visions but failed to address foundational issues effectively. This lack of consistent direction further hampered Friendster's ability to compete in the rapidly evolving social media landscape. By 2009, Friendster was acquired by Moel Global for approximately $26.4 million, less than Google's offer five years earlier. Under new ownership, Friendster attempted to pivot towards social gaming. In June 2011, it officially rebranded itself as a social gaming platform, discontinuing its social networking services. The new Friendster introduced a gaming portal featuring various massively multiplayer online MMO games. While it preserved user accounts and contact lists from its social networking days, Friendster struggled to attract active users to its new gaming platform. The competitive landscape had evolved, and Friendster found itself playing catch-up in yet another arena. Despite securing additional funding and investments from notable figures in the tech industry, Friendster continued to face challenges in attracting active users to its new gaming platform. The competitive landscape continued to evolve rapidly, and Friendster struggled to maintain relevance in an increasingly crowded market. Finally, in June 2015, after years of declining engagement and an inability to find its footing in the gaming market, Friendster officially shut down. The pioneer of social networking had become a footnote in digital history. The story of Friendster serves as a cautionary tale with several key takeaways for current and future tech entrepreneurs. First and foremost, it highlights the critical importance of scalability in tech infrastructure. Planning for growth from the outset can prevent technical issues that might alienate users. Secondly, Friendster's decline underscores the importance of prioritizing user experience. A seamless and engaging user experience is critical for retaining users in any online platform. As Friendster added features without considering their impact on performance and usability, it drove users away to competitors offering more streamlined experiences. Thirdly, Friendster's story demonstrates the need for adaptability in the face of competition. Companies must be willing to innovate continuously and respond swiftly to market changes. While Friendster rested on its early success, competitors like MySpace and Facebook rapidly innovated, offering users new and exciting ways to connect. Lastly, Friendster's revolving door of CEOs highlights the importance of stable and effective leadership in guiding a company through challenges and opportunities alike. As we reflect on Friendster's journey from pioneer to cautionary tale, we're left with a question. In the rapidly evolving world of technology, how can today's innovators avoid becoming tomorrow's Friendster? The answer lies in learning from history, staying adaptable, prioritizing user experience, and never taking success for granted. Friendster may be gone, but its legacy lives on in the social networks we use every day. It paved the way for the connected world we now take for granted, reminding us that in the world of tech, being first isn't always enough. Innovation must be constant, adaptation swift, and the user always at the heart of every decision. The story of Friendster, from its meteoric rise to its ultimate demise, serves as a powerful reminder of the volatile nature of the tech industry. It's a testament to the speed at which the digital landscape can change and the importance of staying ahead of the curve. As we look to the future of social media and technology, the lessons learned from Friendster will continue to shape strategies and decisions in Silicon Valley and beyond.